Hello and welcome to The Third Sector. I'm your host, Tamara Brinkman. In our society, there are three sectors, the public, the private, and the nonprofit, and it's that third sector that we're here to talk about today. Joining me for today's episode, we have Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission here to uh, talk with us today. We have Felicia Carter and Eliza Malott. Hello. Thank you. Welcome to The Third Sector. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for having us. <clears throat> well, we're glad to have you guys here. Um, I have long heard a lot about Whitewater Valley Pro Bono. I've heard the name in the community. Mm -hmm. I theoretically know what you guys do, I think. Um, but I'm excited to learn a lot more and share with our viewers today um, what all that is. So let's dive right into it. And Felicia, okay. if you want to just um, tell us uh, what the Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission um, is. Okay and what it does. Okay, so we are Wayne and surrounding counties only no cost legal fees local um, where people can come and have legal questions or if they have legal issues, civil legal issues that mm -hmm. we're the only place locally they can come. Um, Indiana Legal Services also provide services but they're out of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. There's no place for um, anybody locally to go and ask questions. Okay, so um, how long have you guys been serving the area? Um, since 2002. Well, that's a long time, mm -hmm. so we'll say 22 years. So when you say somebody can come and ask questions, is that just for guidance, or do, can you actually represent them in a courtroom if that's what they needed? Okay, we do not have attorneys on staff anymore okay. that represent people in court. Okay. Um, that's just not a service that we provide. Okay. We have taken some cases on where we do have volunteer attorneys actually take on the case. Um, that is something that has happened, um, but for the most part, it's just legal advice and or if they need help or even like um, referrals to other agencies. Maybe what they have is not actually a legal issue, but they need help with Social Security or um, help with unemployment issues and can put them in touch with the right agency. Okay, okay. Um, so what is the, what started White Wilder mm -hmm. Valley Pro Bono? Who started it and why? Um, Local attorneys and philanthropists um, wanted somewhere locally for people to be able, for no cost legal fees, for the underserved population of mm -hmm. Wayne County to have um, representation and help with their civil legal issues. Mm -hmm. And so they got together and the Pro Bono Commission was created. Okay, okay. So let's talk about, do you have any examples of the types of things mm -hmm. besides, I mean, I know you mentioned maybe it's social security card or maybe it's something simple like a, a connection point, but maybe some, some things that would be a little bit more legalese um, yeah. that you guys would get into for folks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do a, a lot of civil issues, um, a lot of family law. Okay. Um, things like adoptions, custody, um, child support, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, that's one area. Um, and then we help with some of the questions you can ask are um, wills, estates, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, you know, elder care, educational law, um, landlord tenant is huge ah, um, okay. in this area. A lot of people. Um, want to talk about landlord tenant, like their leases and things like that, um, okay. rent payments, stuff like that, um, and expungements of their criminal records mm. that does fall under civil law, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. Okay, okay. Um, Eliza, tell us a little bit about what your role uh, within Whitewater Valley Pro Bono is. Um, I pretty much invented my role, <laughs> what <laughs> well, else to say. That's one way to get a job. <laughs> I, guess I wanted to volunteer and Mr. Maley was so kind to offer me a position as a law clerk. Okay. So I will go around doing research, uh, legal research for something we do, like FAQs for our education series, mm -hmm. uh, frequently asked legal questions uh, for the big proponents that we do and mm -hmm. for every education series, there's a broad general topic and I'll make an FAQ for that. So like housing, family, debtor, creditor, creditor um, okay. government issues. And so I will do research. I'll basically help Felicia with whatever she needs to be done. 
Um, I'm just here to learn and I feel like I get a lot more out of this than I give back sometimes. And it is just so great to help the community. Right, well that's great. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, um, so we'll just level set. Neither of these wonderful ladies are actually attorneys. Um, uh, Felicia, you're a paralegal, if I'm not mistaken. And then um, Eliza is on her path, though, to become an attorney. You, this is your uh, law clerk at this point, law student clerking yes. kind of. Is that where we're at? Yes, I am a third, a third year rising. I am going to be a 3L this year. Okay. And then I'm hopefully taking the bar this summer. Okay. And I hope to come back as an attorney at bare minimum as a part-time role. Okay, okay. Well, that's a great thing. Um, because oftentimes that's so hard, right? Felicia, you get these great folks that can help you out. We get wonderful volunteers in the nonprofit world. And then life changes happen, which we all understand. But then at the same time, we're like, darn, there goes this wonderful volunteer who helped with so many things. And oftentimes it's hard to fill those shoes. So, um, so let's go into a little bit more about the mission I mean, what is the mission of Whitewater Valley Pro Bono? The mission is to provide legal services for the underserved population for their civil legal needs. That is okay. the core mission okay. of what we do. Um, and day to day basis, I talk to people on the phone, they call and you know, I explain, you know, I'm not an attorney, I can't give you legal advice, but let me hear about your problem and see how we can help you. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have a couple of good programs that we have ongoing where we have attorneys that can talk with people if they have legal issues and things like that. So. Okay, okay. Are the attorneys that you guys um, use as resources, mm -hmm. um, are they local to the area or do you call them from all over? Um, both. Okay. Both. Um, we have volunteers um, from Indianapolis. I've had um, any anybody that you speak with will be um, an Indiana attorney, mm -hmm. Indiana attorney. So, um, but they have them from Indianapolis. Um, I've had them from Muncie, and we do Zoom as well, like okay. Zoom consultations. Um, but then a lot of our volunteers are also here local of the local firms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure that their attorneys volunteer. Right. So just to quickly touch back mm -hmm. on all the folks, the attorneys that mm -hmm. volunteer are from Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, that is because you have to take a, the bar yes. as you're getting ready to. And so you get licensed by state. So you can't really know Indiana law or practice, mm -hmm. you know, Ohio right. come into Indiana, no Indiana law necessarily. Right. I mean, I'm sure there are attorneys who do that, but that's really why we need folks that are local from Indiana is because they know the laws of the state um, and what, mm -hmm. what, how they can help people, Correct. right? Okay. Um, what, uh, what kind of goals do you guys have sort of for the next year-ish, or maybe you've got longer-term mm -hmm. goals, three or five years? I mean, we're all working in sort of different time spans mm -hmm. at this point in the world. Things shift so quickly. Yeah. Well, about three years ago, we had an we had an attorney for ten years, a single attorney that took on cases and represented people in court. Okay. And um, he opened his own practice, and he's no longer with us. So for the past three years, we've been kind of reestablishing who we are as a commission. Okay. And the way we're modeling it now is we have multiple attorneys that volunteer for us, so we don't need that one staff attorney mm -hmm. that we can have. We reach a more of a broad spectrum of people we're able to serve more so each year our goal is over and over is just to serve and educate the community Got it. Um, okay. with you know legal services or any kind of legal issues that they have okay so <clears throat> when people come or, or I guess let me rephrase that is there a qualifier for them to be able to, 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 to come to you guys and ask questions or level, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, take advantage of your services? In other words, and by that, is there uh, a, an income? Is there, you know, other things that, you know, we help from here to here, but mm -hmm. from here to here, you got to go to somebody else maybe? Or yeah, um, there is a, we're not as rigid 
Okay. As, as in, uh, you know, each situation for people are different. Okay. Um, but we do, we kind of pivot around the um, 125 of the federal poverty level, the 125% of the federal poverty level. Okay. And if you fall below that line, you do qualify for our services. Mm -hmm. But there are some things like our Ask a Lawyer program, your financial status doesn't even come to that. Okay. Um, generally, People from all walks take advantage of that. So okay. um, it is directed towards low income people. Um, and But if somebody, like if you look at their tax documents and they, it, it says that they're not, but yet that they've exhausted all of their financials mm -hmm. on on an attorney but now they no longer have that attorney and they don't have the ability to get help otherwise okay. that's when we can help them okay. so it's just, it's very situational right so. okay all right um you mentioned a program mm -hmm. talk about your programs okay we have a couple of different programs going on right now um the main one that we do um is our Ask a Lawyer program, mm -hmm. and that's, it continues, it's, we've been doing it now for um, over three years at Morrison Reeves Library. Okay. Um, and it's generally the first Thursday of every month from 4 to 6 p.m. down okay. in the Bard Room, down in the bottom of the library. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes, like um, in July, for instance, um, it, it, if it's around the 4th, we try, we we oh, have to, to back adjust. it down right. to the second holiday. Second, but um, yeah, for the most part, it's from 4 to 6 p.m. And I have generally five to seven attorneys um, that volunteer and they come and they sit at tables. And then I do a small intake form of everybody that comes in. Mm -hmm. And I try to match them up with the correct attorney. Um, if it's like a will or, you know, a uh, a property issue a certain attorney or a family law issue another attorney mm -hmm. and um, they get short free consultations with the attorney generally 10 to 20 minutes they can come and sit down and show their paperwork and talk with them and see really what their next steps are okay um, now they generally won't get representation out of this okay. um, it's not something that we do obviously but um, and so that's one of the main programs that we have, and that is monthly. Okay. Um, and then we're also doing our legal education series through the summer, um, and we're having about two a month, and um, they cover things like the next one coming up will be educational law, um, special education law. Um, oh, okay. That's coming up, and then um, towards fall and August, towards the end of the month, we'll do a make-a-will clinic um, because August is actually make a will month. Oh, okay. And, um, so we'll, we always do like a make a will clinic where people can come and they pre-register and they can get free wills, POAs, advanced directives, which oh. is something a lot of people in our community, um, can't afford to go to an attorney for to buy the package. And this is a completely free service. So okay. that is, that is something else that we're doing as well. Oh, wow. That piques my interest, mm -hmm. mainly because I should probably do all those things. <laughs> um, very interesting. So for some folks who may not understand, you when you're talking about you can help people with civil, but you can't help them with the criminal. Mm -hmm. So just okay. a little examples of the difference between the two. I'll let either one of you sort of take that. Oh, um, civil issues are non uh, the police don't really get involved. Got when you it. think criminal, there is something you could go to jail for, or th there's a policeman can be can haul you off to jail. Got it. And with civil, that's not really an option. I mean, it can happen with certain child support issues. Okay. But criminal is something that a police will come and charge you for. Right. And civil is literally everything else. Got it. And so. It is for everything from your divorce to mm -hmm. a protection order, maybe. Okay. And your taxes, businesses, Bankruptcy. bankruptcies. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Okay. <laughs> well, so thank you for giving a little bit more about mm -hmm. that because I think that um, if you don't, if you're not in mm -hmm. law all the time, this mm -hmm. isn't something you're necessarily mm -hmm. going to 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 know. Do you guys see? Um, people coming and asking questions. I mean, I know you mentioned rent or landlord renter mm -hmm. assistance. This is a, a big area you see folks coming for help with. 
Are there some other key areas that you see high need in our in our area, um, you know, from your clients that are coming to, to seek your yeah. services and help? The three key area, <laughs> areas we see over and over again yep. are consumer um, debtor creditor, okay, um, landlord tenant, and family law. Okay, um, generally dealing around custody, child support, okay, um, parental parenting time, that sort of thing. Those are the three key areas that we help with a lot. Okay. And have you seen those stay pretty steady for a long time, or have you seen any shift in that sort of pre-COVID, post-COVID, since we sort of have this delineating line in our society now of how life was one yeah. way and now another? Well, I, I was, I've only been with the company for three years. Okay. So I am post-COVID, um, but over the three years that we have been doing, um, yeah, I started at, at – in 2021 so okay. it, it's it's a little bit past time we they were already had the office back open and things. okay so okay um yeah it's it's yeah it's pretty <laughs> consistent with that and then um as well as like wills and estates and property mm -hmm. those those would definitely be our main four okay so. okay how many people would you say that you guys um, interact with mm -hmm. on a daily, monthly, or annual mm -hmm. basis? I don't however you kind yeah. of track that. Just about every Ask a Lawyer session has up to 30 people come through in that two hours. Oh, wow. You, so every month you have at least that many people. Right. Okay. Yeah, generally, it, it's right at the 30 mark. Sometimes okay. a little more, a little less. Um, and if you think that's only a two-hour window. So that is yeah. a lot of, of cycling through. If you think that every person spends 15, 20 minutes with each attorney. Wow. So that's why it's important to have volunteer attorneys and volunteers in general helping um, with our clinics and stuff because these are a lot of people getting served. Right. Last year it was 174, 194 people that came through Ask a Lawyer alone. Oh, we wow. served 745 people last year over oh the course of the year would okay. between ask a lawyer um, office visits if people like I said I'm not an attorney so I can't help right. um, give legal advice but I can help fill out paperwork if you're going to file pro se in the courthouse I can help you fill out that paperwork if you right. don't understand we can pull it up in line online together mm -hmm. and we can go through things like that that's stuff that I can help do as well okay. so we count that as people served Right. Mm -hmm. oh, well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're 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 giving them guidance, and that's absolutely. really I would assume what most folks are, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully looking for. Right. Um, so if you let's say you're not an attorney, I mean, if the attorneys out there are listening and you've mm -hmm. got some time, come on, give it up, help <laughs> these folks out, give some time. But if you're not an attorney, say it's just me and mm -hmm. I want to volunteer because I'm passionate to make sure folks mm -hmm. are being treated fairly or whatever that might look like. Um, are there things I could do? Can I be of value as a volunteer to you, or how would that work? Abs absolutely, you can. I actually need somebody for the, um, Ask a Lawyer Nights to come and at least do, like, the check-in process. Okay. Because if I could have one person doing the check-in, then I can help with everybody else. Okay. Um, yeah, you can come to the events. You can share the information we post everything online and on our website and stuff and if you even if it's an event that you're not interested in right. that doesn't mean that your friend isn't having debt or credit or issues or right. having something family law so make sure to share the information okay and then as always you can donate there's a donate button directly online okay um if if that's something that you'd like to do but yeah we definitely need volunteers um and if if you wanted to come into the office and meet and just see where you could could help yeah mm -hmm. i'd love we'd love to talk to you okay and so while we've been chatting mm -hmm. um we've had a little bit of graphic going up i think maybe the website mm -hmm. and phone number some information about mm -hmm. that is are, are those the best way to connect call or the website Absolutely. or your social media to yeah. find out about how to connect with you guys yeah. that way you can connect over facebook messenger we get see, those as we well <laughs> So, yeah, um, email. My email is directly on our website. Okay. And you can call the office directly, however it's best for you. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so you can volunteer. Let's talk a little bit about how you guys are organized as an organization. Mm -hmm. So we know... Um, Eliza, that you're volunteering, um, you're doing kind of summer internship-ish a little, um, uh, and then you're there 
full time, but full -time. just break down the staff. Like who who's top, okay. who's here, how's okay. that? Are they paid? Are they not paid? We, we're a very, very small operation that we only have three paid employees. Mm -hmm. um, Eliza is a, plate, a paid clerk, um, so but she's part time. And then we have Aubrey Weist. She is um, our external affairs manager. She actually lives in Indy, um, so she does a lot remote. Mm -hmm. And then I'm there full time. My office hours, um, open office hours are 10 to 2, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Um, but I am in office more than that. It's just those are my office hours where I take in people. Right. Where you can so, say these mm -hmm. are the times you can come Correct. and do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then can 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 things be can accommodations be made for folks that say ten to two they're working and they can't oh, come yeah, to absolutely. you? And so is that ask Absol a lawyer? Or is that oh, just special yeah, no. special if, scheduling if you, maybe? If, if you don't get off work till five, but you really need to come in and see me, it's my office is actually in the city building. Oh, okay. So you can, I, it's open until I think seven o'clock. So if you wanted, if we wanted to meet afterwards or something, and I'm not opposed to meeting somebody for coffee if they needed to talk, but they didn't want to come so up this, to the office for right. whatever reason. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. those are good things. Those are good things. Um, the, I, I, I forgive me. I keep thinking mm -hmm. about the, the ask a lawyer event and I somehow envision in my head like this version of like a speed dating but it's with an attorney <laughs> when you've got 30 people in that little time and 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 you know you're trying to get you know all these folks. I'll never and, be and, able to get that out of my head now. Well there you go see that's all that came to my head so I'm happy to share that with you so for your next your next ask a lawyer you can think of it as a, a you know even though it's not like they're probably going to every single attorney that's yeah. there because as you said mm -hmm. you're trying to have a mix of folks who can sort of cover different areas of need and Absolutely. so one attorney might be a little more busy than the other yeah. attorney and that's <laughs> maybe not necessarily you know so we'll, Absolutely. we'll, we'll skip on the <laughs> on the other um how do you guys get funding to do what you do is it public is it private is it grants is it a combination how how, how do you guys get funding who's paying uh, it? well we're it, it, it's a nonprofit, so we have um, we do get grants. Um, okay. The Wayne County Foundation has been a wonderful supporter through the years mm -hmm. with us, and couldn't thank them enough. Um, we uh, Docs Pop every year does a matching campaign with us. Um, that's another big funding source for us, and then we the Civil Legal Aid Fund um, from the Indianapolis Bar. That, those are our three main. Um, funding sources okay. and then we have also private donors and we have events to raise money we'd have four events a year okay um, to raise money um for for the commission okay, okay. and we, we do have a, a 20 member board oh my so we, goodness we have we have a large board of attorneys business people philanthropists that all have ties to wayne county they don't okay. they may not all live here okay um, but they're all they're all have a passion for pro bono services and for Wayne County. Okay. So. Okay. So are you guys seeing the needs of your services increasing? I mean, I know you said you've only been there since 2021 mm -hmm. and obviously you guys served a lot of folks last year, yeah. but we're, I mean, we're roughly halfway ish, mm -hmm. uh, going to a little bit over the halfway mark of mm -hmm. this year. Are you seeing that number probably tracking to the same? Is it increasing? It's, or? it's increasing, but we're also expanding our services. Ah, okay. So we're we're doing more publicly to try to get the word out because not a lot of okay. people when I first started ask a lawyer, it it didn't get going off the ground right. very well because it, it it just wasn't something known. But the more things go on and the more events that we have and okay. the more you know people that I meet in the community like you, um, it really helps spread the word that we're there and what we do and how we can help. Wow. So. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a few minutes left, but I'm going to give um, each of you this question. So okay. we'll start with you, Felicia. Okay. What brings you the most joy about what you do? Oh, there are so many things. I, I truly love my position, and and I often joke um, at home that it, even if I wasn't paid, I would still do what I do. If, if okay. I had the ability, I would still do it right. because I truly enjoy helping people, mm -hmm. and I think probably the most 
what gives me the most joy about it is seeing somebody through to a resolution. And when people come to us, sometimes they're at a really bad point in their life. I mean, they're, if they have taken the time to reach out for help and to come into my office or to come to ask a lawyer, that means they have something that is a serious issue to them. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's, it's not fun for them. Right. So when I see somebody either with our help are able to get out of debt or get guardianship of an incapacitated adult, you know, something like that. And when they come to that resolution and they thank me for our help or, you know, that's what's really, truly rewarding is mm -hmm. seeing people in what we do and how we actually help the community. Wow. So we always ask people when they leave, like ask a lawyer for, you know, hey, did you get the information that you needed? Did you get what the help that you needed? Uh -huh. And there are sometimes they're like, well, I got the information, but it's not what I wanted to hear. Or, you know, I mean, because, I mean, it's, you know, and, and then, or they say, yes, I have a starting point. I know exactly where I go from here. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. That sort of thing right there, that's what brings me the most joy about, right. about what I do. Well, thank you for mm -hmm. doing that. That's really wonderful work because um, legal anything, civil um, or mm -hmm. criminal anytime you've got to engage attorneys and all of that. I think it's, um, it's, it's daunting mm -hmm. for the best of us. Um, and so if you're a person who's just really struggling in all areas, it's just like one more thing of, of overwhelming. I can only imagine just, uh, yeah, and it can be scary you know, and very scary. Mm -hmm. Right. So I try to be very personal and very compassionate with everybody that comes through our door because, yeah. you know, in build that relationship, that's, that's what it's about right. is to give them, you know, the, Hey, this is, we're here to help. Right. So you're the friendly face. Mm -hmm. All right, Eliza, give me my yours. Um, I just really wanted to help people. I'm, I grew up in a small town. I love small town living and I really like to see it continue to thrive. And the community is really what I think is the most important. And if I can help in any way, I yeah. want to do that. And this work is, I'm passionate about the law anyway. So the fact that I can use that skill to help others is what keeps me up at like 12 o'clock on a Saturday night working on an FAQ, <laughs> trying to answer somebody, trying to figure out what somebody going through a divorce right. or having debt issues or trying to file for Medicaid, what questions they'd be having um, and how I can answer them the best way I can in the most layman terms. Right. So it can be the most accessible to everybody because I don't think the law should be as complicated as it is. And I just want to help people simplify it as much as possible. Right. <laughs> and to see that it is accessible and there mm -hmm. is help out there. And just to see that I can be a part of that is yep. something really important to me. Well, thank you both. I mean, this has been great. I've learned a lot. We are so grateful for the work that you guys do in our community. Um, it'll take us to the end of our episode today. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me and also Felicia and Eliza from Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on The Third Sector. Stay well. Mm -hmm.